Greetings and welcome to class as we begin the month of November. I know things continue to be difficult for, for you all uh, with school on again and off again and now I guess you're virtual again. I know it's really hard not to be able to be with your friends. Just know that we, we do care for you and we are praying for you even as we go through really difficult days. Uh, November also means uh, elections. We just had the election. Uh, as I record this, we still don't know who the president is. We don't know the makeup of the Congress. A lot of things unsettled. These are really weird times for us all. You know, I was thinking about the election, and um, elections are a way in which we exercise a little bit of political power. I get to decide who the next president will be and who the next representative and so on. Um, but for those who choose to be politicians, it's really about power. I mean, it really is about political power, the ability to set the agenda for the nation, for the state, for a community, the ability to, you know, kind of push through your own sense of what ought to be and what not, what is not to be. That's all about political power. It's about the ability to get, get the, what you want and to make things be the way you think they ought to be. And it works in our political system. Uh, our political system works pretty well, even with all its, its quirks and, and, and um, momentary glitches, but it's still about power. But I was thinking about that. You know, there's an interesting story in the Gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter 10, here's what happens. James and John, two of Jesus' disciples, come up to him and they say, we want to sit on your left and on your right in the kingdom of heaven. We want to be in places of honor and power. And Jesus says, it's not for you to decide. It's not for me to decide. It's not our issue right now. Let it go. Okay, fine. Well, the other disciples get wind of that. And probably because they, I mean, they get jealous, probably because they didn't think of it first. But all of a sudden, there's this big squabble between the disciples and James and John. And Jesus intervenes and he says, look, out there in the world, the Gentiles, that's everybody else. The Gentiles, their masters, their lords, their bosses, their, you know, kings and queens and everybody else, they lord it over them. They exercise power over them, but that is not the way you are to be. In the Christian community, it's different. In the Christian community, if you want to be the greatest, you need to be the servant for everyone else. Weird. But that's what Jesus says. That's what it means to be a part of Christian community. And then a little bit later uh, on, the disciples and Jesus are on their way to Jerusalem. Um, and you might remember this from, from first communion class. Jesus and his disciples gather for a meal on Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper. And Jesus is going to give them communion. Remember all that? Well, one of the things he does is he washes their feet. Jesus washes their feet. Now remember, they, they, they're, they're wearing sandals, open sandals probably, and they're on dusty, dirty, muddy roads. So the feet are pretty disgusting at the end of the day. And so they're gathered around the table and Jesus gets up and he takes a basin of water and he takes a towel and he goes and he begins to wash their feet, which is normally what the lowest servant would do. I mean, the servant at the bottom of the barrel is the one who would get to wash feet, but it is Jesus who washes feet. And when he gets done, he says to them, do you know what I've done? Do you get it? You guys call me Lord and you're right. But as Lord, I am a servant to you. And he says, that's what you need to do. That's how you need to live. We call that servant leadership. Not the leadership to be able to call the shots and to make sure everybody does what I want and make sure that I am served but the leadership that says, I will be the servant. Servant leadership. And that's what we're going to talk about in the month of November. And we got a great way to do this because we had this wonderful person. Uh, her name is Becky Murphy. She's a member of our Saviors. She is a, um, she's in the social work department at um, Gunderson Health Systems. And she has a master's degree in servant leadership from Viterbo University. So for the last couple of years, uh, Mrs. Murphy has uh, graciously been willing to come in and lead a class on what it means to be a servant leader, even at your age, in your world, in your context, with the people you interact with. Um, not, when, not just when you grow up someday, you know, and become a politician or a business person or something like that, but right now, what does it mean to do it right now, right now, right today? And so uh, that's what the November class is about. We're also going to do that in February, so you'll get a little bit more of that. Um, 
So what will happen is we have, uh, Mrs. Murphy has some, some stuff, kind of a short video here to share with you. Uh, she's gonna ask you to do some stuff, a little bit of a homework assignment, and then we'll get together next, um, next Wednesday, November 11th, on Zoom, boys at six o'clock, girls at 6.30, only for about 25 minutes. Uh, Mrs. Murphy will lead the uh, session, I'll be there to help. Uh, make sure you print off the worksheet. It's on the website. You can print that off. It'll give you some things to, some more, some YouTubes to look at and some things to think about as we think about what it means to be a servant leadership, a servant leader, I should say. So I'm excited about it. Um, I hope you will too. Thanks for being here. And uh, you know what? It's time to turn it over to Becky Murphy. So Becky, take it away. Hey everyone, my name is Becky Murphy and I am in charge of your confirmation class curriculum for the next couple of weeks. I'm sure you guys are tired of doing the whole Zoom thing and watching videos. Um, however, it's the best that we can do for now and hopefully soon we can be back in person and do things that way. Um, so the servant leadership is a curriculum that I, Pastor John asked me to um, start teaching a couple of years ago. And so you get some in seventh grade and then you also get some in eighth grade. Um, and typically it's a pretty interactive session when we meet in person. Um, and we're gonna still try and do some of that this time, just a little different version of it. So um, you're probably wondering what servant leadership is. And it sounds like it might be a hard concept, but actually it's pretty simple. So servant leadership are actions that create a more just and caring world. So that means anything that you do any time of the day to um, make somebody feel better, um, make somebody feel appreciated, make somebody feel valued, to just help somebody out. Those are actions that fall under the category of servant leadership. So for example, um, if you do a chore for your mom and dad and without them telling you to do that, or they do tell you to do it and you just do it without complaining or rolling your eyes or any of that, servant leadership, you just did it. Um, if you help a friend with homework or maybe help a sibling with homework, maybe you rake leaves for somebody or you carry in groceries for somebody, anything that you do that makes somebody else feel good um, or feel better about themselves is an example of servant leadership. So if you really think about it, you do servant leadership all the time. You just never really put a label on it before. One of the things that um, we talk about as far as servant leadership on a bigger scale um, is hunger. So in the United States, in 2018, 42 million Americans didn't have enough food. And to bring that down to um, a smaller scale of what we can relate to, in our own La Crosse County, one in three people in our area struggled to pay for food. Now that was pre-COVID. Um, that was before a lot of people lost their jobs, were unemployed, businesses were had to shut down or decrease their business. So it may be higher than one in three people right now. I don't know the exact statistics on that. However, what we know is there are people that you know, they could be classmates, they could be friends, they could be neighbors, but people who struggle to be able to pay for food. Well, our community of West Salem, and specifically our Savior's Lutheran Church, has recognized that hunger is a problem in our area. So these are some of the things that they've done. They started the summer lunch program, which offers free lunches to any kids in the community. They offer the food pantry at the school, or I'm sorry, at the church. Um, they do the fall scavenger hunt with the confirmation classes where you can go and you get food donations from people and you turn those into the food pantry so people can come and get food. When you do your regular confirmation college classes, um, which you aren't doing this year, unfortunately, but one of the options is serving at the Salvation Army, which is really cool. Basically, you serve a meal to people who don't have enough to eat, who are coming there um, to get some food for themselves. And then there's always monetary donations that they collect as well. Um, that jar up in the front of the church where the little kids go and put their money, that's money that oftentimes is going towards some type of hunger task force or hunger um, organization that's helping feed people. Um, locally and across the United States and even globally, sometimes that money gets sent out of our country even to help with the, the hunger. So part of our servant leadership curriculum is watching a couple of videos, which give you guys a better idea of what servant leadership is. So this is one of the videos um, that you'll be watching and the worksheet that is attached to the presentation for today will have the specific 
video link to it, and then also instructions. So basically, I want you to watch the video once and just get a feel for um, the different actions that are involved for each person and how that contributes um, to their lives and what an, an impact that those actions make on each individual's life um, of the people that are in the video. And then I want you to watch it again. And I want you to actually write down some of the things that happen in the video, as many as you can find, that have a positive impact on other people. And I want you in this video particularly to watch the change in the community um, based on the actions of the main character in the video who goes around the neighborhood and um, does just simple, simple things to help others, but how strongly that impacts them. And so that's one of your assignments for next week when we do our Zoom, is that you'll watch this video once, just get a feel for it, watch it again, and write down everything that you see that is a demonstration of servant leadership. And then also, like I said, paying close attention to how um, the people in the video react based on when the video starts to when the video ends and the changes that you see in the community. So then the next video is this one. Um, and this one is, again, one of those domino effect videos. It starts with this gentleman who does one nice thing to help somebody out. And it starts a huge change of reaction, um, change of events that leads back to um, kind of the beginning of where things started. So another video where I want you to watch it twice. The first time, just get a feel for what it um, is happening in the video. And then the second time, write down all of the examples of servant leadership that you find in the video. And then those are the things that we'll talk about when we have our um, Zoom next week. Okay. So what can you do to demonstrate servant leadership? I know it's a little bit more difficult right now because it's COVID, right? So you're not supposed to hang out with a lot of people. You may have relatives, um, neighbors, grandparents, people that don't necessarily want you to come to their own home because they're trying to stay safe and and um, not be around a lot of people. However, there are still a lot of things that you can do. Um, there are a lot of nursing home residents who can't see their family, can't see any of their friends. You could write letters to them and drop them off at the local nursing home and the staff there can drop those off. You can um, cut out masks that can be sewn together to be donated to the local hospitals, to our local schools, to help anybody that doesn't have a mask that needs one. Um, the patterns are online. They're super simple to follow. You can get some fabric. Um, you know, Things like that are things that you can do even during the COVID time where you can still demonstrate servant leadership. Um, but maybe not be as close to people just to you know keep everybody safe. You can help out around your house. I'm sure your parents have things that you can help do. Um, you guys are in seventh grade. You could help with meal prep. You could help with cleaning, take the dog for a walk, chores, all sorts of stuff. And then also you can check in on your friends, right? Everybody's a little isolated right now. People aren't, or kids can't be in school, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, so check in on your friends, make sure they're doing okay. Talk to them, find out how things are going. Um, those are all easy things to do and demonstrate servant leadership and things that can be do, done during this pandemic that we're going through. So I'm gonna leave you with a quote. Um, the quote is, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Anything you do to help somebody else out or to make somebody feel better is a positive act. And that's what servant leadership is. Months later, years later, they might not exactly remember what it was that you did that had a positive impact on them. However, they will remember you and how you made them feel. Um, and that's what servant leadership is about. And that's what we want to accomplish is creating a more just and caring world by helping others out and making them feel better. Okay, so reminder to check the worksheet to do your assignments. So it's watching both videos twice, writing down all the examples of servant leadership you see in the videos, and then um, also paying close attention to the change in the people throughout the video um, and the impact that those actions had on the community um, while had on the community. And then um, we will meet next week um, to go over the videos and get your guys' feedback and talk about next steps for servant leadership in the winter. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.